Okay, so this is unit four, research methods, assignment three, research design and classifications of data by me, Lee Sanders. Right, uh, there are five different research designs. They are experimental research, which is when you measure how one variable affects another one. This would be the independent affecting the dependent variables. There is cross-sectional, which is when you gather a range of participants' opinions. This could be like through a um, questionnaire. A uh, case study, which investigates a specific individual team over a large period of time. This could um, possibly be maybe um, if you're measuring or investigating the psychological effects of an injury at different stages of recovery and rehabilitation maybe. Um, there's longitudinal, which is where you measure the same variables over a long period of time. This could be um, good if you wanted to measure development of a specific individual over time and um, through training. And there is comparative, which compares two or more, two or more things. So then experimental research designs. We have three different types. There's repeated measures, independent groups and match pairs. Uh, repeated measures is where the experiment is done using a group of very similar people with similar interests. This could be maybe the same class or same like maybe 17 year olds who play football, males, that sort of thing. Um, in each level of the independent variable is repeated with different conditions. So that means that you will change the independent variable and measure how that affects the dependent variable. And um, then there is independent groups, which is um, the same, but you use different people rather than the same or similar people, very similar people. So this would use a range of different people with different interests and experiment in different level levels of the independent variable and conditions or conditions, which is the same as repeated measures, like I said, but with um, different types of people with different interests. And then there's match pairs, which is just using two individuals and working them in two different conditions of the independent variable which is the same and these would be similar people and um, rather than specifically similar or complete rather than the same or different it's just like using similar people yeah right research sources there were two primary and secondary primary data is data which you've collected yourself using and uh, used for your own research so it should be you actually going out there and collecting the data yourself which you will use specifically for your research. And secondary data is data which someone else has collected that you're then borrowing and using for your research. You can maybe get this data off the internet or from a friend or someone else who knows who's collected it. The advantages of using primary data would be that it is spe specific to your research. So you'll get only the data that you want and will need and use in your research. Whereas with secondary data, you'd have to scan through it and find what you need and extract that from their um, their data to use it with your research, which will take time. Okay, so classification of data. There are four different types. And um, the first is nominal, which is collected in categories. The participants are put into categories and counted. So this could be, um, if, you, if, you, if a sample was put into categories of hair colour, so it's a bit like brown, brunette, same thing, blonde, red, ginger, whatever, and put it into ca categories like that. Or could be, it could be eye colour or um, age, that sort of thing. And um, then there is discrete data, which is collected as one of two extremes, either yes or no, male or female, that sort of thing. And um, ordinal data is ordered in rank order. In rank order, <coughs> so um, I could be in height order, weight order, largest to smallest, smallest to largest, whatever. So it could be like the quickest sprint time to the slowest sprint time, or depending on what data you're collecting. And um, and there's con there are two types of continuous data. Uh, continuous data is numerical data, which can include decimal places. Um, the two types are interval and ratio. Interval data 
is numerical with set intervals and ratio is the same but the value cannot go below zero so this could be like height you can't have a negative height but um, with interval data no sorry with yeah with interval data um, it could be something like um, let me think maybe for instance maybe if the scoring system can go below zero if you get negative points for doing things wrong or missing the target or whatever then that would then go below zero and would be um, ratio data here is an example of a table full of lots of different data here you can see in the uh, age column this is continuous data um, as the data is numerical and there are equal intervals between the data and there is an absolute zero so you, it cannot go below zero because um, we can't have a negative age and um, the next column is the sex or gender column this is discrete data as you can only be the male or female you can't be anything else really and um, then there is the sprint column which is continuous data um, as it's numerical and it contains decimal places and cannot go below zero but sorry there's a mistake that that should say um, ratio it's ratio data because you can't run 15 meters in any negative amount of seconds so yeah so that's wrong and um, but here the weight change in pounds this can be negative if you lose weight you can have a negative score therefore that column is interval data as there is no set zero so you can lose as many pounds as you like as long as you weigh that much in the first place and the next column is the standing broad jump in order in a rank order therefore that is ordinal data and the next is sit and reach rating which is in categories of average below average above average and excellent so yes that is nominal data and the next column is smoker non-smoker which is the same as the sex this can either be you are a, you do smoke or you don't smoke there is no in between therefore it's just discrete data and the final one is height um, which is continuous it is numerical and cannot go below zero which means as there is no there is a set zero so that will be ratio data okay now we're going to go through our qualitative data collection there are two types you can have interviews and focus groups and observation so then interviews and focus groups there are three types of interviews they're structured semi-structured and unstructured structured interviews are done with a set question with set questions which will determine um, before the interview and they cannot be changed regardless of the response from the interviewee and semi-structured consists of a mixture of set questions with the opportunity to ask follow-up questions to gain more information depending on their responses so you can ask them questions regarding their response which you cannot do in structured interviews and there is also unstructured interviews which begin with a set question and then the rest of the interview will turn into a more natural conversation where, with the interviewer having to think of questions on the spot in relation to the interviewee's responses and answers. And then there is focus groups, which are group-based discussions, and they're usually semi-structured. So there's a few points that the um, leader of the focus group will want to um, ask and discuss. And... Um, but they can kind of go on to talk about irrelevant things um, which cannot be good which aren't isn't always good because you would have to then go through it to find the relevant answers that you gain from the focus groups okay so here are some advantages and disadvantages of all these of all the things i just talked about so uh, for the structured interviews some of the advantages could be that they it is straightforward and simple uh, the interview has better control over the conversation and it's easier to compare as there are set questions which will give answers 
so it's easier to compare them. And um, the disadvantages of structured interviews would be that it's rigid and inflexible, and there is a risk of researcher bias, which means that the researcher may ask questions to gain answers he thinks um, that he wants. And um, semi-structured, the advantages would be gives the up it gives the opportunity for follow-up questions, so that they can ask questions depending on the response they gain. Um, there's better flow, so it isn't rigid and inflexible like the structured interview is. And because you can ask follow-up questions, you can easily adapt it to um, gain more information. And the disadvantages is there again, there is a risk of researcher bias for the same reason as structured interviews. Um, and it can be difficult to come up with follow-up questions, so you'd need to be a very skilled interviewer to be able to um, do it. And um, the, the advantages of unstructured interviews is that you, you may get more personal, honest answers as there is a lack of structure and it's more of a flowing conversation, unlike the um, previous two. And you may gain unexpected data because of that. And the disadvantage is that it could get off topic because there's no structure to it. And you can get, um, you, know, you have to go through it to get the relevant answers you need because of this. And you may not get the right answers at all because they might go off on a tangent and talk about something completely different. And again, there is a risk of researcher bias because they might end up talking about things that they want to hear or try and gain what they want to hear from um, the interviewee. And with the focus groups, you'd get a range of opinions because you're talking to more than one person, which means you'd also get different perspectives. It may be more in depth because they might feel more relaxed because they're with people like um, they're with other people which may also get you more honest answers. The disadvantage is, is they may feel intimidated by the amount of people that are there. It's also hard to control as there isn't really any structure to it and there's lots of people discussing things at the same time. And some people may find it hard to follow, but so that they might follow the rest of the group and agree with them because they might feel intimidated. Now we're going to go to quantitative data collection, which is closed question questionnaires and observations. Questionnaires, they close questions, so they give um, specific answers. This can be as simple as a yes or no answer. Um, for example, do you enjoy participating in your sport? The advantages of this is that you will get answers specific to your research that you want to get, you want to gain them. Um, answers are provided quickly from a large number of people in a short period of time. So you can send a questionnaire to maybe 50 people and get them in quickly. Um, it's easy to compare and contrast because to measure change. Um, the disadvantage is it's, it needs to be accessible. Uh, answers can be untruthful, they might lie. Um, they can be rushed, they might just tick the same one all the way down because I want to get it over and done with. Um, different people might interpret the question differently. And there is also a risk of researcher bias as they might choose questions on their own assumptions which may not be important. And finally you have observation, this can be used for both qualitative and quantitative data. The qualitative will consist of descriptive notes about the participants' behaviour and reflective notes on the participants' opinions and thoughts, whereas the quantitative data will consist of notation analysis, which is where you watch a participant and note down what they do and then analysing it afterwards. The advantages of this mean is that it can be immediate, so you do it, you watch them, you get the notes and you analyse it straight away. Um, it can be held in the participants' natural settings, so you can go and watch them play a game. Um, you can identify behaviours not found in an interview, so they might not tell you certain things, but you can go and watch them and find them, find out for yourself. Um, you can identify behaviours not chosen to, that they don't choose to disclose, so they might not want to tell you certain things. And they're the same with what I just said, you can go and find out for yourself rather than making them up and tell you. Um, and notes you make can be detailed. This is more relevant to the qualitative uh, research, obviously. And the disadvantage is, is that we will get research, research bias. So they might misunderstand or misinterpret what they're seeing. It, um, it can be difficult to record, especially with quantitative analysis, with notation analysis, and with, with quantitative data. Um, you can get the Hawthorne effect, which means that the participants might act, the participants might act differently if they know they're being watched. Um, it can be very informative, but not reasoned, because you might not have reasons for what, what their behaviours. It can be hard to, hard to ensure adequate controls and reliability.